Hi there. I recently posted some pictures online of a vintage model I'm building. Now I'm covering this model in doculam and then tissue on the top. And I'm doing this because I not only want a, a model that looks uh, a vintage, has a vintage appearance in keeping with its 1930s origin, but I want something that's strong and durable at the same time. Now these pictures uh, prompted a whole host of questions about the technique that I was doing. So I thought it might be interesting to do a, a video just showing from start to finish the techniques that I use. Now I'm going to be showing you how I covered this tailplane. It's, it's a single elevator tailplane as some of the old vintage models used to have and it's a very light flimsy balsa structure but once it's covered it's surprising how much more durable it feels. Now I'm going to be covering it in the first instance with doculam. Now this is 38 micron doculam and it's basically a roll that goes in a laminating machine, a roll of plastic goes in a laminating machine for laminating documents and it's just a, a very thin uh, plastic which has got an adhesive on it which is heat activated which is great for us and it does shrink. It's not a powerful shrinker but it does shrink enough. Once we've got the doculam on I'm going to be covering it in some Japanese Asuka tissue and this is really lovely lightweight tissue. Now I get this tissue from a company in the UK called Free Flight Supplies and I'll provide a link to their website in the description below this video. I'm going to be starting right at the very beginning. I'm going to cut the doculam in a minute to start covering the tail and then we'll see the whole process through and we'll come back and have a look at the end. Now just one point to make, adding the doculam does add a little bit of additional weight, it is very light, but it does add a little bit of additional weight over what you'd expect with a traditional uh, tissue and dope covering. But I think compared to the durability you get, it's well worth that small increase in weight. And at the end of this video I will talk about the weights and I'll show you uh, the, the, the weight per metre squared and the individual uh, component, the weight of the tissue and, and the doculam. I'm also going to be covering this in a water-based polyurethane varnish. Now there's no reason why you couldn't use dope, I just really like this varnish because it's, um, it's water-based, like I said, so the brushes wash out, it doesn't smell very strong, it goes on lovely and, and produces a really nice finish. Now they do this in both a gloss and a matte. I prefer the matte, just I like the look a bit better. And it's totally fuel-proof, or, or really, really fuel-proof, both for petrol, diesel, glow. So it's a great product to use. I don't know how available it is outside of the UK because I think this Wilco, it's um, perhaps only a UK brand. I'm, I'm not totally sure. But I would just think any kind of water-based polyurethane varnish would be just as good. Always worth checking it though in advance. So anyway, I will start cutting out the doculam now and we'll start to get this covered. So we've got our doculam laid out over the uh, over the structure and we're just going to start tacking this on to these main ribs here. Now you can see we've got the shiny side up and the matte side of the doculam down and it's the matte side that has the glue on it and we're going to put this on in exactly the same way as we would any other covering film but we need to be careful to try and get it as wrinkle free as possible because even though it shrinks it's not a powerful shrinker but we can get a lovely finish with it. So we'll just keep ironing it on nice and gently.
Now when you come to the corners, Docky Lamb doesn't particularly stretch, doesn't shrink very well. But to its benefit, it is very thin. And so if we just do a little bit at a time and pull it just gently, it'll go around the corners by putting lots of little micro creases in the docky lamp as you go. And once you've trimmed it off, you can then go around with the iron and just iron all those creases and they just literally just disappear because the uh, the docky lamp is so thin. So that's that's one of the advantages of docky lamp. It uh, it just it just creases and the creases disappear and the seams disappear. So I could just work that around now. Right, well now we've got the docky lamp stuck down mainly around the edges to the central spar and that's gone on quite well. There's still wrinkles though but they will uh, they will shrink out when we come to do that. So now I'm going to put the docky lamp on the other side, the top surface, and, um, and I'm going to do it exactly the same way. And then we'll have a look at it and shrink it down. Right, we've got both sides done, and uh, both sides, a few wrinkles here and there. Now, I put the docky lamp on with 110 degrees, just enough to stick it, didn't want to shrink it at all. Uh, when I got to the edges, I bumped it up to uh, to 115 and now I'm going to put it up to about 150 to start to shrink it and I might even end up putting it up to 200. We'll, we'll see how this goes um, but as we start to shrink it now as we put the heat on it you can see that the colour will start to or at least the, the opaque nature of the film will change and it will become clear. Now this is 150 now on the iron and one thing to be aware of while we're shrinking this is that yes it shrinks with heat but it also shrinks after we take the iron off and it cools down the film tends to contract so if there's a crease you can't get out with heat it might be that when you take the iron off if it's not too bad it will just disappear as the film cools down. So I will get on and uh, shrink this down now. Right, well that has uh, shrunken nicely. There's a very slight little bit of a ripple down at this end, but once we get the tissue on I don't think that will show, but you can see that's gone lovely and flat the way I'm shining the light on it there hopefully. Now there's the odd bit of, I think this is probably just a little bit of condensation perhaps on the inside, or it might be that sometimes the film just goes a little bit opaque again. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for my iron to cool down, uh, it's quite hot at the moment and then I'm just going to go over that with a cool line and get rid of those uh, slight, uh, slight patches you can just see there. If I don't, when we put the tissue on it, it will show up as a, a dark patch on the tissue, so much better to get rid of that now. Now I'm just starting to cover the elevator and a quick suggestion here, if you've got a really simple structure like this which is quite flat, then you can always stretch out your docky, docky lamp and tape it to your bench and uh, with your structure underneath like this elevator. Obviously if you've got a fuselage or a big thick wing then it's not going to uh, not going to be as good or you can't do it really but but with something like this something nice and simple and flat it's a good way to uh, to make sure you get your docky lamp nice and uh, nice and tight. Right now I'm cutting the tissue to size and what I'm going to do is I am going to cut it so that we have two nice clean leading edges that will just lap up around the ball nose just to the, the very kind of top, top edge 
and then we can get a nice clean edge there without having to trim it when we've got the tissue wet on the uh, on the wing. The back I will just bring up uh, square, we'll see that in a bit, and then I will trim that off later. But if we can get this front edge looking nice that will make life a lot easier. It does make it a little bit harder on the initial lining up uh, when it's wet before we polyurethane it but uh, but I think it is well worth the effort and the rest of the tissue we'll just have at the sides and at the back we'll just have overhanging a little bit like that. So there we go and now we're almost ready to put the tissue on. Let me just show you this. See now that when we get the tissue on that tissue will just lap around that leading edge there and it will just make it a lot nicer and neater to do. We could trim it afterwards but I prefer to do it like that. So we will get this lined up now get this uh, front edge lined up and then we'll wet the tissue and smooth it out. Right now I'm going to leave this for a while just for the tissue to really soak in the water. I might just very lightly brush it now having said that just to uh, and we can lift the tissue up and push it back down. We need to make sure we've got this leading edge lined up and that we don't move the tissue in relation to that leading edge. So we're just going to smooth this down now until there's no wrinkles. Right, I've got that nicely wet, nicely smoothed down, and I'm going to leave that for a little bit just to uh, just to soften up the tissue, and then I'll come back to it and just make sure no more wrinkles have uh, have appeared, and then I can um, and then I can start to polyurethane it. Right, well this is ready to be polyurethane now, and all, almost ready. I've um, got it on blocks so that the edges will hang over and when you spray it, it's worth turning it over and spraying the underside so that the tissue actually sticks down on this edge. If it's, if it's wet on the underside of the tissue that really helps. Now we'll deal with that bit in a second but just to go back and have a look at that front leading edge See that's nice and neat and clean, so we'll have a good edge there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just dry off a little bit of the water. We don't really need to do this necessarily, but if there's less water there, the polyurethane will dry better. I just lifted that up a little bit. It's quite a forgiving process to be honest when you get used to doing it. Now we just want to put the polyurethane on really, really thin. Smoother. Now because it's quite wet we get these little bubbles forming underneath. If it was drier we wouldn't. But they just do just disperse if you just brush it lightly. So don't get freaked out by, uh, by little bubbles. And we're just going to do this like this, really spread this really nice and thin across the whole wing. And as I said, just making sure we don't get those bubbles.
Now just to show you these bubbles, hopefully they will show up on the camera, but if we just work them very lightly, they disappear. You can see there's a patch there, patch there. There, and they've gone. Right, well I've got that polyurethane now and I've got all the wrinkles out and it's looking great. I'm going to keep an eye on it just while it dries, make sure no ripples develop. It looks a little bit grainy at the moment, but trust me, it will, uh, it will come good when it's uh, dried and we've got another coat or two on it. The leading edge I've smoothed down, made sure there's no uh, drips or anything like that, so that's really nice. The trailing edge and the tips, I've polyurethane down, but I'm just leaving those hanging at the moment. I haven't put any polyurethane on these longer bits, so that's just stuck on there with a little bit of uh, water tension. Now, I'm going to leave that for the moment, and when it's almost dry, or, yeah, almost dry, I'm going to lift this up, and I'm just going to peel this back or make sure that this is back to a point where it can be trimmed nice and square. But we'll have a look at that when it comes to it. Right, well this is starting to dry off nicely now. There's are, there are still a few damp patches, but it's looking good and uh, it's lovely and flat. So now's a good time just to turn this over and make sure that this tissue hasn't wrapped around onto the other surface that we're not, uh, we're not covering yet. And that all looks nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that back and just check that this is pushed down around the, uh, the edges nicely, which it is. And uh, I'll leave that now until that's uh, completely dry and then we'll trim it. Right, well this is fairly dry now. It's probably still got a little way to go, but it feels dry to the touch anyway. And I've started to trim up around the edges, which is a, a really easy process with a scalpel. If you just hold the tissue and just run the scalpel along and you get a nice, uh, nice clean, a nice clean cut. Now, I'll just do, finish doing this a little bit. Now when you've cut this off like this, oops, it's just a little bit there. Right, when you cut this off like this, you may still get just a little bit of, uh, of roughness around the edges, uh, or, or, or just a little bit of a, a wrinkle which you wish perhaps wasn't there, although this feels pretty good. And if you do, you can use your iron just to flatten that down, ready for the next, uh, the next cover to go on. And also when you put your final cover on, you can just touch those little wrinkles with the iron. Right, well I just had to wait for my iron to heat up, I'd forgotten I hadn't turned it on. And I think the iron just softens the, uh, the polyurethane. I'm just doing this at a, well it's 112 now, I think it's set to 115. But it's surprising how it just smooths, up, smooths off the, um, the edges and those little, just those little bits of tissue that are perhaps sticking up. And just run it round and it doesn't take much at all. And then we are ready to, uh, to put the blue on. So I'll get the blue cut up and uh, we'll get it covered. Right, well I've got the, uh, the tissue cut now for both sides of this. Now I'm going to do this in two pieces. The underside which you saw first was totally flat. This has got a little bit of a camber on it, not much. So I think it will be easier just to do it in two pieces. But having said that, even on um, main wings where you've got the dip between the ribs, you can get it to sit flat with wrinkle free. You just need to get it well soaked and just keep working it to get those wrinkles out as the tissue starts to dry a little bit. It, it, this tissue does stretch a little bit, it does have a bit of give, not a lot, but enough to get between those dips between main, uh, main ribs. But anyway, I just thought it'd be easier in two pieces. Now, we've got the, this central piece here gets cut out for the fin to go down. So I thought I would do a seam down the middle and this piece I would just wrap around so I don't end up with just a silly little piece here. 
So I'll get on and do this now in exactly the same method as, uh, as previously. So here we have the finished tailplane and you can see that has come out absolutely lovely. Now I did this in, uh, in a single day, the, the covering, the doculam and the tissue on both sides. And as I said right at the beginning of this video, it's not only giving a, a lovely traditional uh, tissue look, I mean this is matte, but there's no reason why we can't have it gloss if we wanted. I, I just prefer the matte look. So, but it's not only giving that traditional look, it's a, a really strong, durable finish. And I reckon if you tried to push your finger through this, you would probably start breaking the balsa structure before it gave way. It really is strong. And this was a very flimsy tail plane, which actually feels a lot stronger now. So, so, and actually that's a real big benefit. Now, as I said right at the beginning, it does add a little bit of weight. And I know people are going to be interested in the weights. So I've got a few figures down here in front of me. The Doculam, which actually comes on a 150 meter roll, or the roll I bought was 150 meters, only cost me 18 pounds sterling. So it's really, really cheap, which is a benefit. And the weight per square meter is 34 grams per square meter. Now the Asuka tissue, is about half that. It's about 15 square grams per, sh uh, per square meter. And the overall covering, which includes three coats of polyurethane, thin, ni three nice thin coats, comes in at about 120 grams per square meter. Now, this is gonna be slightly over what you would expect for just a, perhaps a tissue and dope or tissue and uh, polyurethane because you've got that 15 grams of doculam, 15 grams per square meter that is, which is actually quite a big area. But I think for the strength and durability you get, it's well worth that extra weight. And just to put that into context, uh, Aura Cover is around about 80 grams per square meter and Aura Text is around about 100 maybe just over 100 grams per square meter. That's Oratex. If you're interested in these figures, I will put them in the description below this video so you can, you can have a look at that and think about it yourself. But I, the, the weight for this compared to a standard tissue covering really doesn't concern me, that, that extra increase. Like I said, the durability will certainly uh, pay dividends in the long run. So anyway, I hope you found this useful and interesting and um, you know if we can make lovely looking vintage models with nice traditional finishes that's great so anyway i hope you enjoyed this thanks very much for watching and good flying